give thanks and he is the truth, the life, the, the way, the fact that you chose to be here this morning. Uh, he will bless you. He doesn't let those things go unblessed, y'all. Uh, we're going to do a song to start things off. You can continue visiting with your neighbor. Say hi to your person next to you or get yourself situated. Just whatever you need to do to get into the mood. Jason's smiling at me right now. Whatever you need to do to get in the mood, you know, to worship, worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Sing along with us even if you want to. That'd be great. Miss Lacey. That wasn't supposed to happen. Praise Mandy, the did Lord you uh, today? Welcome to church. Welcome to church. Welcome. Let's try that again. Without the without the techno. Oosh, 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 oosh. No. All right. I can't get that beat down my head now. It might make this next song a little interesting when we play it like that, you know. Jesus has a table spread where the saints of God are fed. He invites the chosen people come and die. With his man of Miss Lacey. She's got the word and the announcements and all the good stuff. Good morning, church. Glad to see you all here this morning. I want to welcome our area graduates and say congratulations. Uh, Brother Byron will have something special in just a minute, but Merritt McGahey, Christopher Miller, Aiden Stewart, and Landon Chapman, congratulations. We're excited for you and what God has in store um, as you begin your journey. Our church homecoming celebration will be June the 20th. This is our seven-year anniversary, so we hope that you'll join us for that. Youth camp is approaching, so remember that, Youth July 12th through the 16th. We have all of our leaders signed up, all of our kids signed up, all things have been mailed, so now we're just waiting on the day to go. Mandy is nervous. <laughs> Y'all pray for our leaders because it's a long, exhausting, exciting, crazy week, but it's going to be a great one. Our men's Bible study will begin June the 1st at 6 o'clock every other Tuesday following. Please make plans to attend this. It's going to be great. All right, we're going to get back into worship, so let me pray for us. Father, we love you so much. God, we thank you for the gift of today. Lord, everything that we have is from your hand, and so we just give thanks this morning. I pray that you would meet us in this place as we worship you, as we open up the word and study what you have said um, all throughout your word to us this morning. Lord, we give you all the praise for what you're going to do, what you have done, and what you continue to do. It's in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Miss Lacey. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all would sing along with us on these songs. We have the words up here on the screen. So it's the purest form of worship is to get to sing. Whether you think you can sing, whether you think you can't sing, it doesn't matter. He loves to hear you. He says that uh, when, we, when we get to the other side, the ones that didn't sing here will be the first ones to shout. So. Get a jump start. 
sound great this morning. This is one of my favorite ones here, y'all. Y'all seen nice and loud on this one. This one is, I could have wrote this song. This was all about me right here.
Y'all sound so good this morning. Such a blessing to be singing praises to our Lord and Savior.
a treat for y'all. Miss, Miss Landry, would you like to come up and sing a special, please? Y'all are going to love this. This lady's been blessed with a beautiful voice. She's chosen to use it for the Lord. Y'all are really going to enjoy this. If this don't bring Jesus into your heart, check your heart, because this is, uh, is going to be uh, special. It's always special. Comfort for family, protection while we sleep. We pray for healing, for prosperity. We pray for your mighty hand to ease our suffering. And all the while, you hear it spoken. Love us way too much to give us lesser things. Cause what if your blessings come through in drops? What if your healing comes through tears? What if a thousand sleepless nights are what it takes? No, you were near. What if trials of this life? Thirty. 
There they go. Boy, it's great to be in the house of the Lord this morning, and thank you, Landry. Uh, didn't you say that your teammates were going to sing one now after? Huh? Maybe I misunderstood that. <laughs> There's one that's going to come on now. Let that boy come up here and sing with us. Come on up here. Acting like his daddy, isn't he, Kendall? Ah, uh, wanted to do something real quick this morning. I'm uh, going to ask all the graduating seniors. You don't have to come up here, but I do want you to come up and stand. Come on. Come on. Right down here. Now. You know, it's really cool to watch them come up. These four play softball. This one I know plays lots of sport, and this one here is an actor slash genius. But anyway, they all come up here like they just scared to death this morning. But I want to introduce them to you best I can. Uh, the, the girls I would have known a lot better if they'd have wore their uniforms today. Uh, the two guys I, I know pretty well. Uh, Merritt McGahee to the far left here. Uh, let's see, uh, Landon Chapman, I believe, if, if that's right, he'd be the next one. We have two more that are not here today, Christopher Miller and uh, Aiden Stewart. I don't believe Aiden's here, is he? I didn't think I saw him. Now I gotta get over here where I can see y'all. Okay, they don't have their numbers on. Chandley Oaks. Sage, Sage Hoover, Leo Terry, and that must leave Sarah Kaufman. We're so glad that y'all came with us this morning. Uh, I'm going to ask you to do one more thing. Uh, come on up, we'll sing a little song. Now, if you would, go over by what window. April, would you or somebody get me some pictures of this group over by the window there? Okay, thank y'all. Yeah, right over there by the stained glass window. Y'all give them another round of applause. <laughs> yeah, get the boys out there somewhere where they don't mess up the picture too bad. <laughs> oh, me. All right, thank y'all so much. I'm so excited that uh, 
as if y'all could all be with us today. Um, I'll try not to take keep you too long here, but uh, we've uh, we're blessed with with a good bunch of kids here, and so glad that the girls from Range came out to be with us today. And and uh, Landry, we loved the song wherever you went. Oh, there you are. Okay. We're going to have to get some more lights in here. Either that or I'm going to have to clean my glasses off or something. But you know, I just want to say, we, we've had our area and in our church and in our community, man, we've had a great year of sports. You know, uh, Alba went uh, a good ways in the playoffs. Uh, Como Picton, I think, got beat out in the, was that air, or reg- area, wasn't it, or regional Semifinal, regional semifinals, and the uh, young ladies from Reigns will be playing next week in the regional finals, I believe. <laughs> and they've all been a blast to watch. I have had more fun this year watching these girls, watching Skyler, uh, JC up in the crow's nest, play basketball and volleyball, and and uh, so much of it was online last year. I watched uh, Aiden play. Uh, football and some basketball online and uh, but we're proud of you girls and and uh, proud of all of our athletes and our students here and man what a impression y'all are making not only on the athletic and the academic fields but in life itself we got a couple of uh, prayer requests this morning y'all remember janine she uh I don't know if she was doing acrobatics or what she was doing, but Janine broke her kneecap last night, and uh, Janine Hayes, so y'all remember her, uh, and remember poor Kent and and Joyce, because they're going to have to be the ones that put up with her for a couple of weeks, but uh, anyway, hopefully uh, hopefully she's okay. I talked to her last night, or text with her last night, and she said she was in a lot of pain, but hopefully they fixed that. Uh, and the... Game's Tuesday night, right, girls? Tuesday? Rockwall Heath? Okay. About what, 5 o'clock, 6? 6, okay. All right. Man, I got so many notes this morning. Y'all know me, I don't do very good if I got to do a whole lot of different things. Whatever he said was right, I'll bet you. <laughs> uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Most loving Heavenly Father, we what an honor it is to come into your house this morning to worship. We have so much to be thankful for in this life. You meet every need we have. You guide us and you protect us each day. You offered your son Jesus to be the only sacrifice for our sin. That mercy has afforded us eternal life to each and every one who will call upon the name of Jesus. Father God, we call upon you today to be with us through this service, and I pray that your words will touch hearts and change lives. In Jesus' name, amen. I saw something this week thought was interesting. wanted to share it with you. But it's 12 reasons that people stop going to sporting events. I thought that would be appropriate for today. It says, num- number 12, is every time I go, they ask for money. The next one, uh, number 11, is the people I had to sit with don't seem very friendly. Number 10, the seats were very hard. Number 9, the coach never came to call on me. Number 8, is the referee made a decision I couldn't agree with. Number seven is I had to sit with some hypocrites who were only there to see what others were wearing. Number six, some games went into overtime and I was late getting home. Number five is the band played some songs that I'd never heard before. Number four, the games were scheduled when I want to do other things. 
Number three, I don't want to take my children because I want them to choose for themselves what sports they like best. Number two, my parents took me to far too many games when I was growing up. And number one on the list, since I read a book on sports, I feel that I know more than the coaches do anyhow. Cat calls from the back. <laughs> Where's the ushers? <laughs> oh, hey, I just wanted to ask all of you this morning, and many of you are not, but are you old enough to remember the old American Express slogan from the 90s? Yeah, I know some of you weren't even born in the 90s, but uh, the membership has its privileges. You remember that one? Membership has its privileges. It's easy enough to apply for a credit card. No question about that. When you apply, you may be approved, you may not be approved. Membership in God's family has its privileges also. Obtaining membership in God's family is much easier than applying for some old credit card. You don't have to apply, you don't have to worry about being turned down. As, as we talked about last week, all it takes is faith in God's grace through Jesus Christ. Admit you're a sinner, that you can't save yourself, and that you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's that simple to be approved. Membership does have its privileges. The membership in God's family changes your situation, and it changes who you are. I want you to take a look with me this morning in Ephesians chapter 2, starting in verse 19. It says, Consequently, you are no longer foreigners or aliens, but fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household. Foreigners, aliens is defined as strangers or outsiders, if you will. That's what we were. We lived apart from God. We lived outside the will of God, and we were strangers to His kingdom. In fact, we belonged to Satan. That instant, that very instant that we trusted Jesus for salvation, our address changed. We became a part of God's family, a valued part of the body of Christ or the church. Now here's how the Apostle Paul described the household of God and how it is built. In Ephesians 2.20 he says, It's built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. Paul illustrates these verses by using the, a building as an example. The church, it says, is, is built on a foundation lay, laid by the apostles and the prophets. Now, what does that mean? That means that the apostles and the prophets were writing down, keeping notes, and they were spreading God's Word. Then it says that Jesus Christ is the cornerstone. Anyone that knows me knows I'm the worst builder in the world. I can't build anything straight. No way. But the cornerstone is the most important part of a building. The weight of the building, the, how it sets, rests on that stone. If it's removed, things fall. It, 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 goes, it just collapses. The cornerstone of a building is also the key to keeping the walls straight. If you watch builders, when they go out to set their stakes, they always have a point that they start. There's one point where they start to measure from. And they align everything from that point to keep it square. If you watch bricklayers, and trust me, that's all I can do is watch them because there's no way that I could do it. But they'll align a brick on the corner where they want it. And then they run a string 
and the right height and down to level. And that's how they do it. They, they put each one in line according to the string that they've drawn. As a part of the body of Christ, the church, as a brick, if you will, in God's building, we must be in line with Christ also. Now, Paul continues describing the building of the church, Jesus' church in Ephesians 2.21. says, In Him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. Now, pay real close attention to this. Verse 22 says, And in Him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by His Spirit. You two are being built together. You are a valuable part of the church to which, as the Bible says, we are the body and Christ is the head. Have you ever stopped to realize just how valuable you are to the church? Do you know how important you are to the body of Christ. Here we go. Ephesians 4, 11, starting in 11. It was he who gave some to the apostles, some to the prophets, some to the evangelists, some to the pastors and teachers to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity or one in faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Well, I know what you're thinking right now. You're thinking, I'm not a prophet, I'm not a pastor, I'm not an evangelist, I'm not a teacher. You're wrong. I beg to differ with you because you're wrong. Each one of us is that thing, those things. You think, well, I don't get up on Sunday morning and give a message. I'm not teaching a class. But in reality, you do it every waking moment of your day. Every moment, you are influencing somebody. Someone is seeing your dedication to the Lord, or they're seeing your lack of dedication to the Lord. And I don't care who you are. This goes from the youngest to the oldest. Every one of us can reach somebody with the gospel of Jesus that nobody else can reach. They're waiting on you. Might be someone at your work. Might be someone in, in at your routine mates. It might be uh, someone in a in a in any setting that you run across during the day. But each one of us, there's somebody out there that we're, they're that we're the only person that they'll listen to. But if you're not convinced yet, I want to show you some verses that express your value. We'll start in Ephesians 4.15. Speaking the truth in love, we will in all things grow up into Him who is the head, and that is Christ. Now watch this real close, because this is where you come in. Verse 16. For Him the whole body the church, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, that's you, grows up and builds itself up in love as each part, and that's you again, does its work. Paul uses the analogy of the human body here. Think about your body. When you're young, you can do about anything you want to. When you get older, you can still do it. It just hurts more. But just think about it in your life, in your daily life. What if you lost a limb? What if you tear a muscle, tear a tendon? What if you break a bone? If Janine was here, I'd use her as a great example this morning. But suddenly you become not as effective as you were before your injury or before you were hurt. You can still operate, but you, it's just not as effectively as you could. 
It's the same way with the church because you are a valuable part of it. Without you, a supporting part of the, of the building, the body of Christ is missing. You have a part, you have a role that God gave you, and the church cannot function at its peak without you. One of the best examples in the Bible about an individual's relationship with the church is found in Ephesians 4, 4 through 6. There is one body and one spirit. Just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Now there's a lot of all uh, ones in those verses, weren't they? The church is one body, bound together by one spirit, called by one hope, called to worship one Lord, called to trust in one faith, called to identify with Jesus in one baptism, called to submit to one God and Father. That, friends, is a unifying process. It's a unifying environment within a church setting, and it unifies a oneness with God. We come together as one. All these ones make up a church team. When we fail to keep that, that unity of spirit, that oneness of spirit, we deny being part of the team. We take our oneness or our importance away from the greater good of the team. Now, there's going to be very few people that know what I'm about to talk about. But in 1967, there was a band formed called Procol Harum. Don't know if some of you have heard it. Consisted of five young men, barely out of their teens. Gary Brooker, David Knight, Bobby Harrison, Matthew Fisher, and Ray Royer. They immediately had a hit single, and it was called The Whiter Shade of Pale. Now, I don't know if any of you younger folks listen to classic rock like I listen to classic rock, and cl classic rock to y'all may be the 90s stuff, but I'm talking about late 60s and 70s stuff, okay? So oldies to, to all you younger folks, it would be oldies that I'm talking about. But you turn on any oldie station or classic rock station and you will hear that song 54 years after it came out you'll hear it before this day is over with i can guarantee you here's the deal that's what i'm getting at these individuals were outstanding musicians they were uh, very good but as individuals they couldn't make the same music that they made as a group it's impossible to now, when they played together, they were amazing, they still are. It got better. In 2006, here these guys got together again. They're a little bit older. But they got together, and they did a concert in Denmark. And in this concert, they were backed by a 60-piece band. Orchestra would be the right word, wouldn't it? Orchestra. Now, again... These 60 people in this orchestra were great talents, of course. To be in one, you'd have to be really talented. But without the conductor making sure that each one of them is playing the right instrument and playing the instrument that fits them best, without them having perfect timing, the song wouldn't have been as good, would it? The song wouldn't have been good. It took each one of them using a special talent to make this song complete. Another example of team versus oneness is right here, right here today. As I, I mentioned it earlier, as a, as, a, as a church, we have some outstanding young people, outstanding people academically, socially, athletics, you name it. 
I've watched more basketball, no, yeah, basketball, softball, and volleyball this year than I've watched in the last 25. And I have enjoyed every second of it, even when I was in White House, Texas, drowning. Softball is meant to be played when it's dry. Thankfully, it's a turf field, but that rain didn't care falling on me whether it's turf field or not. But what I'm getting at is that here and, and the adjoining schools rains. Alba Golden, Como Pickens. That's the three I watched this year quite a bit. Had an interest in each team. I'm going to point a few out today. Don't mean that this is just for, for reference. Skyler from Alba, one of the best young pitchers around. Tickled to death with her. Love watching her play. However, Skyler wouldn't be a good player, a good pitcher, without her teammates. I don't care how successful she is, no matter how good she is, can't do it by herself. Landry, another one of our church members here, we're very proud of her. But she plays and plays just about any position, I guess. Except maybe canoe rower, and that's what y'all needed the other night, but... But if she's the only one on the field, she's not going to be successful. No way. No matter how her talent, she can't do it alone. And you know, I could go down that whole row right there and the row behind. That is a talented bunch of girls right there playing. Skylar, talented. JC upstairs. And I'm not trying to leave out anybody, Landon. But you couldn't do it. Not a one of you, I don't care how good a pitcher you are, how good a fielder you are, how good a hitter you are, you can't do it alone. It takes a team to do it. Watch JC play basketball, volleyball. How successful would she be without the rest of the team? Well, how, how good would she be? Not at all. No matter her talent, she can't do it alone. Same with, with Landon and his team. Same with Aiden. Be hard for Merritt to do a, a play all alone. I'm sure it could be done. What I'm saying, these folks have some amazing talents that God has given them. But performing as one in a team sport, won't get it. It will not work. The exact same thing can be said about the body of Christ, the church. You may be an outstanding solo Christian, but you'll never produce to your maximum capability if you go at it alone. You need your church team, your church family team. No matter how good you are, you can't go at it alone. But, and when you go at it alone, Christ Church suffers. Same way it would be on the athletic field. Because your piece, your contribution to the church is missing. We come to church to worship the Lord. And we come to church to be reminded that we are on a winning team. We are on a team that wins. We go to the back of the book. We read the book. We win. We win. I really think that Reigns will win Tuesday night. There's no guarantee, but they'll go play hard. And they'll play as a team. They'll get it done. But we know we win against Satan. We absolutely know that. The problem with this world is, is all week, everywhere we go, circumstances try to make us feel like a loser. Satan whispers in our ears that we're losers. People we come in contact with can make us feel like losers. 
But every time we walk into the church, every time, we should be reminded of the victory that has been won through Jesus Christ. The example of our bands this morning and of our athletes and other students of, it should remind us of how important we are to the body of Christ, the church. We are a team. We are a team for Jesus. A team no matter how good. Now we've got four or five outstanding pitchers in this building right now. I, would, I tried all night to find me a, another church that would play us this afternoon. <laughs> Best five out of seven, whatever you want. We've got plenty of athletes, plenty of people. But what I'm saying, and, and not trying to make light of it, no matter how good we are individually, you're nothing without Jesus. You cannot perform as a team without the gift that God has given you. You cannot perform as a church without using the spiritual gift that God has given you. The role of the church is not to be just a classroom. It's to be an, an enhanced, a tool to enhance your development spiritually. You're part of a team. Think about the bands, the musicians. Think about the students that take all these tests and stuff. Think about the sports teams that practice hours and hours before to get ready for the season. When, when they do that, that's what they're doing. They're developing their skills as one. That's what we do as, at, in, a, in a church setting. We want to develop our spiritual oneness with the Lord. Now, as an individual, there's certain things that will be done privately. But certain things just won't work without your church teammates. Membership in God's team has its privileges. It also has its duties in sports, in academics, in society. We have a role to play. God's given you a specific talent to bring to his team. Without that talent, God's church will continue, but it will never be the best it can be without you. Wrap it up so you're right here. I pray for you. My prayer today is just this. If you're not part of God's team, I hope that you get on it today. Accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. Most important thing you will ever do in your life. And if you've already done that, if you've already placed your trust in Him for salvation, I pray that you just don't withhold the gift that God has given you, the gift that will make your church the best that it can be. If you would, if you'd stand. Mike and Randy play, play us an invitation this morning. If, uh, if you need someone to pray with, Lacey or I would be glad to pray with you here. If you want to come to the altar and pray by yourself, that's fine. Pray for the person right next to you. That works so much. Everyone in here has a little something going on that they could use prayer for. That person right next to you will be glad to pray with you.
y'all for being here this morning. It's great to be in the house of the Lord. Uh, our visitors today, thank y'all for coming. Uh, it was really great to have you. Uh, we got several in here this morning that are visitors. So if you hadn't got a chance, uh, uh, if this is your first time here, if you would, they're on the back table. There's some visitor cards if you would like to fill out. We'd love to have a record of you being here. Um, hope you'll come again and uh, join us in in the house of the Lord. Y'all have a good week. Be good to each other. May God bless you. Stacy, would you dismiss us?